What is going on, beautiful people? I am Lee Hammack, the self-aware diagnosed narcissist, and welcome to another episode of A Narcissist Explains. In this series, I go into, go into detail about my TikToks and my YouTube shorts. Today's episode is going to be about how a narcissist makes you feel insecure about going out with your friends or your family. Like and subscribe. Stay Bye, bye, babe. I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to hit out with my friends, okay? You going out with your friends wearing that? Yeah, it, it, it's my, fa my, my favorite shirt. What, what, what's wrong with it? Your favorite shirt is kind of revealing. And why are you stuttering so much? Are you going to see somebody else? I'm, stu I'm stuttering because I, I get a little nervous when I, when I talk to you when I'm, when I'm leaving and stuff. All right, what, whatever. Just, just, just do you. Just, just do me. Yeah, just just do you. You gonna leave me here by myself? I ain't got nothing else to do. My friends, uh, I ain't got no friends like that. You do you? Oh my god! Like, why do you always do this when I want to go out? Why? Why do I? Why do I do what? I'm just pointing out the fact you leave me, you abandoning me, leaving me by myself. What? I'm not abandoning you. I'm coming right back. All right, cool. Just just go ahead and just just do you. I, I'll remember that. Okay. You remember what? Like me going out and having fun, fun with my friends? Fun with your friends. That sounds like a very confident liar right there. You can't even talk straight. Oh my God, I'll just stay here. Never mind. Cool, I'll, I'll put on the movie. So welcome back. Wow, wow, wow. I know y'all like my skits. I know y'all like my little YouTube shorts and my TikToks. That's how I got popular on TikTok, doing those skits right there. And why I have over a million followers on there for everybody who's asking me. Um... So as you can see right there, clearly, I'm, like, if you don't know where I'm at right now, I'm a real estate agent. I'm in my real estate office right now, and I'm going to keep talking here because I like, I mean, I enjoy doing my work here. So the episode right there was clearly about, you know, narcissists. I play both roles here, and I'm here, and I play both roles, and you can kind of see how in that situation, what I did. I made myself or the, I made, the narcissist made their partner feel insecure about going out trying to have fun with their friends and family and doing things like that. Are you going to go out? You're going to abandon me? You're going to leave me alone? You're going to you're going to keep me here? You're not going you're not, you're not going to stay here with me? That's a toxic relationship right there, y'all. That is super mega ultra toxic and if you're dealing with toxic people, that's what you're going to get. I know it is everybody's narcissistic person is going to be different, y'all. Everybody's not going to play the same role. Everybody's not going to be doing the same thing. So some narcissistic people will let you go out with your friends and family. But when you come over and they'll let you go out and they'll blow you up the entire time. You'll be on your phone the entire time trying to figure out what's going on with them, trying to figure out what they're doing. They'll, they'll be blowing you up, texting you, calling you, making you feel, you know, it making everybody else around you feel a certain type of way as well. They'll, they'll make you feel a certain type of way about everything. They'll make you feel a certain type of way about going out. You'll never, ever, you know what I mean? You'll never, ever want to go out again. Your friends might stop inviting you because every time you go out, your phone is ringing every five minutes. You get your head buried into your phone because your, your narcissistic partner is texting you or calling you or something, something along those lines to see what you're doing. Because narcissistic people are insecure. We, we are insecure ourselves. So, of course, we're going to try to make everybody else around us feel insecure. You know, So insecurities run deep and they run rampant when you're dealing with narcissists and toxic people. That's just the way of the world right there, y'all. When you're dealing with narcissists, you can expect an insecure, fragile person that probably, they may, probably, that a lot of times exudes the aura of self-confidence, exudes the, like, I'm a, I'm a great person, I help people, I'm good, my energy is high and stuff like that, but if you insult me, you criticize me, rawr. Like that. You see the little spear fingers. Rawr. You get things like that, y'all. I'm also in a Zoom meeting. Hold on. Give me one second. It's just sort of organically, authentically. That's stronger than before right there. Um, so when you're dealing with toxic people, you're dealing with narcissistic people like that, you understand where I'm coming from because you cannot, like, when you're, doing, when you're dealing with narcissists, um, just expect that. I've got, so like, I know if you're dealing with a narcissist, going out was a task. Or, like, even trying to get them to go out with you. You, a lot of times you try to invite them to go out with your friends. Hey, my friends, hey, they're inviting us out. You want to go with us? No, I hate your friends. Your friends are terrible people. They'll make you feel like you're, they'll make you feel bad for picking those people. You know what I mean? They'll make you feel bad for having this subsect of friends that doesn't necessarily include them. You know, they make you feel bad for having friends outside of the relationship and leaving them home by, the, by themselves. Because you, if you notice in the skit, I said, hey, you know, I don't have a lot of friends. You know, a lot of some narcissistic people, or they isolate themselves. They want to isolate you, and they isolate themselves as well, you know? So if you're um, dealing with a narcissist, isolation is one of the points that you might have to face when you're dealing with a narcissist or a toxic person. They'll just isolate the hell out of you. They just literally will. 
So once you're dealing with narcissists, once you're thinking about it, and once you like, once you understand that you're dealing with a narcissist, this is it right here. You either like, what do we do? Like, I want to go out, but I don't want to leave my partner. Okay, you either have to go out, enjoy your time, because you're an adult. You don't, you're, nobody else. You're not. You're an adult. You're not in prison. You know what I mean? So yeah, enjoy your time and things like that. You get you get to go out, enjoy your time. What you gonna do? When you come back home. They're gonna argue, fuss, fight. Like you, you might, they might let you go out, but when you come back home, they're gonna get you. They're gonna you 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 be scared to go back home, or sometimes you be you just stay out as late as possible, just so you don't have to come back home. You stay out as late, you stay out as late as humanly possible to avoid coming back home and doing things like that. Like, I don't even I don't even want to go home because I know I know what's at home when I get there. You're either gonna get a party that's fake and sleep, or they're gonna be stay. They're gonna stay woke the whole entire time and mess with you. You know what I mean? They're gonna stay woke the entire time and mess with you and be ra and rage out on you, go crazy, and you do things like that. That's just the point of it, right there. That's that's part of it, right there, y'all. So if you if you're dealing with a narcissist, this is what you have. Like this is this is part of y'all. This is like part of the package deal of get being with a narcissist or a toxic person. You have to accept. You have to accept. That this person is going to be super insecure. You have to accept that this person is going to be out there, like literally out there, just like that. They're gonna be out. No, they they might not even want to go out with you. They might start off going out, doing things that you like to do because they're they're acting like you. They're mirroring you. You know, they're holding up a mirror to your life. They become you. They're trying to become you. So when you're dealing with that narcissist at first, you tend to fall in love with yourself because y'all have all the same interests, right? I never met anybody else that liked to hike as much as I do. You know, I, I never met anybody else that liked to talk as much as I do or do this or, you know, pay, play Parcheesi as much as I do. And we, we like to go out to the clubs and the bars. We have a lot of fun. But when, once we got married, the clubs and the bars cut down. I want to go out. I, I still wanted to go out. They wouldn't let me go out ever again. Like, they changed the whole dynamic of the relationship up. They just did. So if you're dealing with a toxic person, the dynamic of the relationship is never going to stay the same. Unless, it's, it, unless it starts off right here. It can go down, but when you're dealing with a narcissist, it's going to start off up here, and, t and it's, it's going to kind of, it's going the relationship is going to like nosedive. You know what I mean? It's going to nosedive into nothingness. So if you want, the longer you stay in a relationship like this, the less you get to go out, the more you get, you get disconnected from your friends and family. I talked to a woman yesterday over Zoom. I was doing my one-on-one -on -one Zoom calls, and she said um, that her friends literally just stopped inviting her out. So like my friends hated, uh, they didn't invite me out anymore. So I got, I felt, I felt so alone because they hated my partner. My friends never even invited me out because they knew he, he, he was gonna either be blowing me up the entire time, or I was, I was gonna be distracted by texting them back, or worried about getting home and complaining about them the whole time. So once I got out, I got out of their relationship, it, my life changed. I, I became happy again. I got to go out with my friends, and then I found a person that, that, that went out with me. We enjoyed each other's time. We enjoyed each other's everything. You know. So you're dealing with things like that. So I feel like where you are right now and how you're dealing with your life right now, I feel like you have to continue moving forward in your life. Because like, if you don't want to leave, go. You either stay, sit in the house, or you deal with the chastise and you deal with the belittling. And you deal with the making you feel like crap because you just only thing you wanted to do was go out and have fun with your friends. A narcissistic person, if you get like you saw in my, you saw in my original video, if you get ready to go out and they're accusing you of cheating. A lot of times, this could be some projecting, and they're cheating on you. They could project how they're feeling, how they're acting onto you. They literally could. They, they just take how they feel, they take how they act, they take what they're doing, and they project it directly onto you. So if, they're, if, they, if they are constantly accusing you of cheating, you might want to look into them. You know, you might, you might want to. You might want to take a look into them because, like, hey, are you going out with somebody else? Who are you going to see? Who are you going to be with? Uh, are you, what are you getting all dressed up for? Who you had a hot date? And then that's not me. You cheating on me? Look into them, y'all. They're making you. But like, if the tables are turned, you don't get the question if a narcissistic person goes out because they're in charge, though, right? If they want to go out with their friends and family, sometimes they won't even tell you. They'll just be out and they'll tell you when they're out. But if you do the same thing, it doesn't work that way. You get chastised, you get yelled at and screamed at. You get chastised, yelled at, you know, yelled at and screamed at. So if you're dealing with a narcissist. Like they get to go out, you don't. Double standards exist in these relationships. Double standards are huge in these relationships. You have to understand that the double standards do exist. The double standards are not going anywhere. They're just not going to change. They just are not. You know what I mean? So if you're dealing with narcissists, 
this is your life. I know I keep hammering, I, I keep hammering this fact home or this point home, but I need you to understand that if you, the longer you stay in this relationship, the more you have to realize that this is your life. If you're going to get chastised for going out, they're going to get to go out when they want to. If you have kids, you pretty much counsel going out. If you're the caretaker, you can pretty much counsel going out. I promise you that. I can promise you that. So go out, have fun. I mean, you're an adult. I know you got to deal with some argument. Well, you, of course, use discretion. Don't want to go. Get, you don't want to get beat up for going out with your friends. You know what I mean? Yelled at and raised out at for going out with your friends. A lot of times, narcissistic people will, will condition you to be scared of their reaction of you going out with your friends. So you don't even, you don't even want to go out. You don't want to cross that, bound, that, that boundary that they set right there. Don't isolate yourself. Just keep your friends and family in your life, y'all. I really, truly appreciate y'all. Let me hop on this Zoom call and finish it up. Thank y'all, thank y'all, thank y'all. Mental illness is out. Peace.